Welcome back everyone. Today's video will answer some of your questions unrelated to Destiny that you've left in previous videos. A lot of questions were repeated so I've grouped all the questions together into categories so I can answer them more efficiently. So the first category is questions about my personal information. How old I am, what country I live in, what do I do outside of YouTube and of course will I ever reveal my face? And the answer is yes, I will do a face reveal early in this video. The second group of questions are about other hobbies apart from gaming. So I'll talk about mixed martial arts and show you some footage from my last competition, my favorite other video game apart from Destiny, and also my other addictive hobby outside of the video game world, Magic the Gathering. Lastly, I'll end with an update on the Saint 14 comic book and an update on Star Wars lore. Let's begin. Personal information. I often am thought to be British, which may be a good thing, or an indication that I hide my Australian accent. Well, yes, I am Australian. I live in Western Australia, in a little old city called Perth. People often claim that Perth is the most isolated city in the world. However, I don't think that is, is correct. I think it's Auckland. Regardless, it is isolated enough to have awful internet. It takes me eight hours to upload one video onto YouTube. Yes, when I finish my videos, I put it on upload and then I go to bed. Let's move on to what you've been waiting for, a phase reveal. Surprise. What, you don't wear a suit when you play video games? This is how I consider it. If someone said to me, We've got 20,000 people registered, and I want to hear you deliver a presentation. You may only get 2,000, or you could get all 20,000 people coming to watch you speak. What would you wear? Well, I'm not going to wear a t-shirt. I'm going to wear a goddamn suit and bow tie. Also, I'm a big fan of the movie Step Brothers, and the interview scene is one of my favourites. Well, Brennan, you certainly have had a lot of jobs. I'm a bit of a spark plug and a human resources lady. Oh, oh you know, it, it's actually, it's Pam. I'm sorry. Well, Pan. No, my name is Pam. Are you saying Pan or Pam? I'm saying Pam. Yeah, I'm sorry, who is this gentleman sitting behind you? Hello, Miss Lady. Pam. So now that we've been formally introduced, you may call me by my actual name, which is Matt. Or you can continue to call me Mylan. I'm 27 years old. I know, right? If you're really into video games, it will never go away. Many of you saw my last video where I spoke about being an occupational therapist, and I am a registered occupational therapist. That is my profession. I don't actually work in a clinic or a hospital anymore. I teach occupational therapy at a university. I know a lot of you guys are from the US, so I think you call university college, but let me know if that's right or wrong. A lot of people really don't understand YouTube and the amount of work that goes into it. And I, th and I think they think I'm lazy or goofing off or something like that. However, I can confidently say that YouTube has taught me a lot of things and I've learned it from you guys. You've taught me how to be a better tutor. You've taught me how to be a better lecturer and how to engage a very wide audience. For example, this idea of storytelling, the oldest form of entertainment, to gather a group of people and share an experience and to share a story, it is extremely powerful. And I'm actually changing the way I teach some units to suit this idea of storytelling or to incorporate this idea of storytelling into the unit to better engage students and to ensure they're still learning. Okay, that's probably enough face time because I am in Australia and it's really hot right now, so I need to get out of this suit. Let's move on to some of my other hobbies and thanks to Praxic Fire for this question. The hobby that I don't often share with people is mixed martial arts. And why? Well, because people often think I'm some type of savage barbarian for wanting to participate in a sport like this. In my professional life, I often dedicate my time to helping others, and now I dedicate it to teaching students to help others. 
However, as soon as I tell someone that I participate in mixed martial arts, it somehow negates all the good things that I do. I am going to play some footage from my last competition in the background. Yes, this is me, as you can see from my face reveal. This is an amateur MMA competition. We have four ounce gloves, which are small MMA gloves. It is full contact. And for those who have not seen MMA before, you can punch, kick, knee while standing. However, you can also wrestle and throw your opponent. Then once you're on the floor, you can also punch them and perform submission holds. I can see why people don't like this sport. And it's obviously a pretty stark contrast to being a university tutor or an occupational therapist. However, what they don't see is all the training that goes into this sport, the physical and mental training. I was training for about four hours, five times a week, whilst working full time in the lead up to this competition. People often say it is violent. They don't like it because it's violent. Violence to me is about intention to hurt someone. If you go up to someone in the pub and you knock them out because you want to hurt them, then that's violent. I don't actually want to hurt my opponent. I've worked in hospitals for many years. I don't want to see my opponent in there. I'm testing my skills against my opponent's skills. This is the ultimate chess match of physical and mental strength. I can tell you right now, that inner demon, that voice in your head that says, you're rubbish, you can't do this, you're no good, you're going to get hurt. And it's not just for sport, it's for anything that you're doing. That negativity, that voice that puts you down, is enhanced tenfold when you're in the ring. That is something that I actually really struggle with. I am a perfectionist, I'm hypercritical of my performance in everything. Every time I lost a competition, I lost the round in my mind way before my opponent defeated me. And that to me is what martial arts is about. It's not about the opponent. If you have control of your inner self, if you have confidence in yourself, you can win any battle. I actually haven't trained in MMA now for over a year, mainly because I started YouTube and I don't have the time for it anymore. However, for many years, martial arts was a big part of my life. Okay, let's move on to some other topics. My favorite video game apart from Destiny, hands down, The Last of Us. Honestly, this game is just insane. The campaign is so engaging, and if that was not good enough, the multiplayer is really, really, really good. I did not actually play multiplayer first time around, however, when it was remastered, I played it, and it truly is excellent. What are the other things I do when I'm not gaming? Well, my other addictive hobby is Magic the Gathering. Man, this game is addictive. And by the way, I'm also addicted to playing Gwent on The Witcher 3. I'll spend hours on The Witcher 3. Well, not hours, because I don't really have hours up my sleeve. But when I get a moment, I'll put Witcher 3 in and I'll just play Gwent on it. <laughs> I'm sure most of you know what Magic the Gathering is. However, for those of you who don't, well, if you're from the same generation as me, you likely remember Pokemon cards where you collect Pokemon and battle them. Well, actually, at the school I was at, we never played or battled them. We just collected Pokemon cards. Well, it's the same principle. It's a little bit more complex than that, though. And I have lots of cards. I've bought cards by themselves. You buy booster packs and you get random assortment of cards. I've got a file with all my rares, mythic rares and shinies included. You can actually get a digital version of this game. And if you think this is something you would like to do, I highly recommend that you get the digital version on your tablet or PC. It's a great way to learn the rules and there's lots of rules to learn. However, what you need to do is after you know the rules, go and buy um, some starter decks, some actual cards, because there's nothing better than having an actual card and play with your best bud. Have a couple beers if you're, well, if you're 18 in Australia or... 21 in the US, which is just insane to me. Um, and I think you really like it. If you're anything like me, Magic the Gathering is such a great game to play. Okie doke. Let's finish off with an update. 
I've had lots of questions about the Saint 14 comic book and when is part 2 going to be released. The reason why I have not spoken about it recently is because I could not afford it. So I did pay an artist to complete the comic book. I wrote the script and described each scene and what I wanted it to look like. The artist, Zach Bradley, drew, drew it for me. That's Zach's profession. He is an artist and he should be paid for it. And it took him about five weeks to complete. It cost me about $800 Australian to make one digital comic book. That, that was something I was more than happy to do. It was something that I wanted to do to give back to the community for what you guys gave me. My plan was for future copies to basically be fan funded. I've got a Patreon account and a fan funding on my YouTube page. Any donations go straight back into improving the channel by making comic books. And what did that cost to be shared across many people? Right now there is about 18,000 subscribers on my channel. If only 800 people donated $1 a month on Patreon, $12 over a year, that would give me $800 per month and allow me to make one comic book per month. So why haven't I promoted this more? Well, personally, I find it difficult to ask for donations. I'm even finding it difficult to talk about it right now. It, it's not in my nature and I'm not very business minded. YouTube is a hobby for me. I also find asking for money ruins the tone of my videos. My videos are about these epic stories and I like to conclude with an epic ending, not please donate to me. And people that don't know much about YouTube, I think assume that we already make a lot of money just from views and that's definitely not the case. Regardless, that is all I'm going to say on the matter. Any donations are still welcome and will still go towards the comic book series. I will leave a link in the description to how to donate. Lucky last. Honestly, thank you for all of your opinions regarding Star Wars lore. I've been playing Star Wars Battlefront recently and I'm really enjoying it. I've also been researching Star Wars lore and it is really, really cool. I'm probably not going to get time to work on it until at least next weekend. As I mentioned in the comics last video, I'm moving house and I have some really busy weekends coming up, which the weekends is where I do my YouTube work. And if I've got anything on the weekend, it eats into my time for making content. So I think you'll probably only see this video this week, unfortunately. I'm really gonna try to get a verse four uh, Book of Sorrows out, but I'll, I'll have to see about that. The overwhelming consensus though for the Star Wars lore is yes, you wanna see Star Wars lore and as long as Destiny continues, that is great. And I'm more than happy with that deal. I've told you about me. Now I think it's fair you tell me some information about yourself. Anything you want, your favorite game apart from Destiny, your favorite game of all time, something else you do in your spare time, anything. Once again, it's been a pleasure. My name is Matt. And this is Marlin Games. Peace.